Oh my gosh, hello guys. Sorry, I'm like I'm two minutes late because I didn't have a chair to sit on. <laughs> so apologies. Um, I had to go run around this and find a chair. Anyway, <laughs> um, thanks for joining. Thanks for tuning in. Um, super, super, super excited about tonight because I'm working on something during a live stream that I actually haven't done on a live stream. I don't think, I don't think I have. Um, and that would be a commission. <laughs> so um, let me introduce you to Catherine Fitzinger. And she runs this amazing business called Fit So Swell. Um, and Catherine designs and handcrafts a line of fine Italian handmade leather goods from scratch from her studio here in Littleton, Colorado, or in the same city, same state. Um, you can find all of her merchandise, all her amazing, amazing bags. Guys, you have to see these. Like they, they look like, like, I don't know. They're amazing. <laughs> I'm like, how does she make all these? So go check her out. She's got these just beautiful colors, beautiful textures, beautiful designs and shapes for all her bags. Amazing stuff. So I put in the description as well as the chat a link to her website, and that's fitsaswell.com. Yep. Um, and she will be, if you're local to Colorado, she will be doing a show coming up December 17th through the 23rd. So literally right before Christmas. Um, and it's called the Cherry Creek Holiday Market. And that's at Cherry Creek North. Um, again, details to that are in, in the description if you want to make sure you remember that or write that down. Um, but basically what I am doing today is... Okay, first off, back up. <laughs> So Catherine has become a plant lady over quarantine. Am I right, Catherine? I think you're watching. Um, and I don't know if you were a plant lady before quarantine, but you've definitely become one after. Like, you guys have to see her studio and her house. Um, it's kind of a jungle. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's like a dream. Um, super cool. So she, because she's loving plants and all things green and white and purple. These plants are amazing. Um, she wanted to create some stickers to sell at um, her fairs and stuff. So, and online eventually. So, uh, yes, definitely jungle. <laughs> um, and so I've actually done three so far of her specific plants or leaves that she loves. Um, and I'm going to try to do two tonight. Most likely, I mean, definitely just one, but we'll see if I have time for a second one. Um, but I can show you so far what we have, but there are going to be stickers that she's going to be able to sell at her um, fairs coming up and hopefully the Cherry Creek one, which I know is coming up soon, but these should be done by then. So you'll be able to purchase these from her. Um, so this is the first one. I'm sorry, Kat, I don't remember the names of these guys, but here's one. Here's another one. Sorry, where's the camera? <laughs> there we go. And then here's the last one. And I actually did end up refining these a little bit, Catherine. Um, so they're a little bit sharper um, than they were when I sent you a picture earlier, which I'm much happier with. So they're about four by four and I'm going to be starting a new one. I lined it or I created a four by four box already. Monastera is the first one. Oops, sorry. Uh, that's what this one is. And the second one is the Calathea White Fusion. Yeah, this one is probably my favorite. I love this one. Although I did like the, the coloring on this one was very similar. It just doesn't have the purple. And I loved, and this pattern here is directly from one of Catherine's plants. It's not, it's not this mature, but it's got this exact coloring. Um, same with this one, actually, I believe. Um, and then the third is Calathea White Star. 
beautiful, beautiful, with a little bit of um, pink showing through. So we're going to do, and I got to pull up my <clears throat> my text here. And I, actually, I kind of want to, can I lower, lower you guys? I don't know if I can without it rotating. So I think we're going to leave it like that. Um, let me just make sure. So there are two different types of calathea. Um, one is rattlesnake, which I think I'll postpone for now. I want to do the other one. Um, the other one is called medallion calathea, which is gorgeous. So let me... Um, Uh oh, cat! I don't remember where you sent me that. <laughs> I think it was text message. Let me um, make sure that I have the photos. Aha! Got it. I got it. Oh, and actually, I'm gonna pull it up on my computer because I think that's gonna be easier. And it's right here. And for those of you watching that are have never been here before. My name's Mary and I do a lot of commissioned work. Um, so I put the link to my commission page on in the description or not the description, the uh, chat of this live stream. So you can go check that out. Um, if you are, you or someone you know is interested in a commission, it's a, getting a little too close to Christmas though for me to do one um, before Christmas. I mean, I can start it, but it, it probably won't be done before Christmas. I have a lot of commissions works currently. Um, all right. <clears throat> mm, beautiful. Just pulling up a picture really fast. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay. So what I do first is, and I'm, let me just try this guys, sorry. Let's see if this is a tad bit lower. Oh, 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 there we go. And I don't know, I can probably straighten you out. Let's try. Yeah, how's that? Okay. All righty, let's get going. Um, all right, so we're gonna, and I've, I'm using Prismacolor pencils, which are, I highly recommend these. Some of my favorite pencils, they're buttery, they're soft, just the best. Um, all right, so now direction of the leaf doesn't matter because when it's a sticker, it can be put any direction. Um, so I just kind of pick the side a way that it's going to look the coolest, at least the easiest for me to see when I'm drawing. And the trick, the most important thing is getting the right shape because a leaf can look very different, not look like the right type of plant if the outside shape isn't right. So we're going to down into here and just kind of see how that looks. Mm, I'm not liking. This way. Okay, shape, shape, shape. It's going to be more like this. Quite can see why they're called medallion calathea. They're very medallion-like. <laughs> ah, go figure. Okay, I think, I think I'm happy with that. And I have to draw, so if you can't see that, it's because I have to draw really, really lightly for this to actually um, be okay when I do colored pencil. Okay, do I like that? 
think so. This, I don't want it to be down the middle. I'm gonna have it go, because I think. Are they very centered? I guess they're pretty centered. I just want to have a little bit more movement. Let's do that, I'm liking that. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, I just love how each of these are so different. Let's see. Yeah, Kat's freaking out. <laughs> She's so excited. <laughs> and if anyone has questions or comments along the way, feel free to put them in the chat. I love to interact uh, and ask questions, answer questions. <laughs> I guess I can ask questions too. Okay, and we're gonna just hint at this outer And then the inner. Yes, Kat is here to answer um, any plant questions you have. Because I am the last person in the world you want to ask about plants. She, she knows her stuff. Okay, so this is just the outside border of each of those sections. And I guess you guys don't know what this looks like unless you know your plants, but um, we'll s watch it come together here. It's very feathery. And if I go quiet, it's because I get kind of focused. So I'm sorry, I try to like engage at the same time, which is important because that's why you're here. It's to kind of be, and I do, I'm a teacher at heart. And so I like to teach as I go, because I can't not, <laughs> honestly. Mm, 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 mm. Then the outer one here. It's actually been a lot of fun because I've been working on quite a few commissions um, this season, which has been super fun to like actually devote time to working on this stuff. Okay, so I'm finding it's funny how the more you look at a plant or anything really that you're wanting to draw, the more you notice things. I didn't see that there was this sort of even spacing of these bigger folds. And so that means that these things have to kind of line up with that. Oh, lost my picture. There it is. Right. 
Um, all right, then. Uh, the outside, and I loved this ripply edge here. It's very subtle, so it doesn't need to be, <clears throat> I think, yeah, the other ones have that just slightly. It doesn't need to be super exaggerated because that wouldn't be wise. <laughs> might look a different leaf if I did that. Might need to calm this down. You might be like, oh my gosh, she's going outside the lines. It's okay, people. It's okay. You can break the rules a little bit here. No one's going to die. No one's going to die. Okay, let's see. Oh, actually, do I have a brush here? Aha, uh -huh. I do. I'm gonna use this one. As I get into the colored pencil stage, I can't really use my hand, otherwise it does rub and blend the colored pencil and it drives me nuts. So we gotta make sure we use the brush for that. Oh, and look, my thing is full which means I need to empty it. And I don't have a trash can near me, so I'm gonna just dump it right here on some paper towels. That's why my sharpener probably hasn't been working. Um, but then we're gonna jump into some color, guys. Some color. Get prepared for some Teacher Mary here. <clears throat> okay, um, so they're very similar colors actually to these other plants I did. Sorry, keep turning over my page. Um, it's got this sort of dark, dark green, and it's got sort of this medium green, and it's got this light green. It's I guess it's not quite like this one, but um, so I just need to remember what I did, and you have to in color pencil work up the layers so it's not going to start out looking the right color and then it will <laughs> magically no i have to put a lot of work into getting the colors to work well to mix well to look like they're coming across as the right color um okay but i'm i've been using this apple green because it's pretty perfect oh you know what i forgot though is the center of this guy actually has a thicker seam there we go to go into the stem and that is probably pretty light so as i do this i have to erase my pencil as, as i go so this is kind of what's going to happen here
Um, I would use a kneaded, I don't know if you've seen those kneaded erasers. They're gray, flexible, stretchy, um, but I literally cannot find mine. It's rather irritating because I've been working on a few different commissions and um, I really need it. I just need to order one, suck it up and order one, order a whole box of them. But that would make this way easier, but whatever. And I have like thousands somewhere. I just don't know where. This is what happens when you move into a new house. You just have no clue where things end up. <laughs> I'm super excited for Christmas. I've been loving listening to Christmas music and the decor and the cookies. Oh my gosh. So I taught a class. I taught three classes today in person at one of the schools I teach at. And, um, it was the last day. And so, you know, you get teacher gifts, which has been awesome. They're so sweet, but all of it is sugar. <laughs> so if anything, I might die of sugar overdose this season. <clears throat> so you may have to come save me. Um, but uh, let's see. I'm, uh, I think if I just lighten this outer edge, then I can just do the darker green and not worry about how it's blending with the pencil. There we go. Okay. Oh man. Yeah. I've had. To my pencils are kind of messed up. Like they've been giving me issues. And I think I dropped my box once and it just cracks the pencil all the way down, like the lead all the way down on the inside. And man, and then they just break. Irritating. I want this to be very sharp. This is the thing I end up sharpening later. It's like the difference between colors. Um, and again, if you're tuning in guys, I am doing a commission for a dear friend and her business and you can check out her links. Go like her on Instagram, follow her on Instagram. You don't like on Instagram, you follow on Instagram. <laughs> Um, give her a follow. She does giveaways. She is in local fairs and shows. Um, what else? Amazing website, amazing products. Her, her handmade Italian leather bags are just amazing. So go check it out. They make great Christmas gifts. Okay, now I can do this outside rim. And again, look at this, look at this. I can just pull this out of here. 
Uh, makes me mad. At least I cleared out my sharpener because the trick is to sharpen to clean off the blade of your color or your sharpener. Um, you can use graphite pencil, sharpen it in there, then sharpen your color pencil. The color pencil always has, a, it's kind of more of a waxy texture. And if you clean off the blade um, with a graphite lead, it can actually get rid of some of that. But yeah, this is like got problems. So. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, let's see if I can make it around this whole thing. <laughs> then it indents at the crease. Then it goes around and it indents at the crease. There's patterns in nature, but it's also got a layer of randomness. This is what I teach a lot about. Um, if you are too repetitive with something like this, it's going to look really fakey. But at the same time, you have to look and find the <clears throat> the randomness in it as well. Because there is random shapes, random lines within the pattern. You know, if you did every leaf the same on a tree that's at a distance, it's just, it's going to look so fake. Okay, people, that's the one layer. You think I can fill it in with this broken pencil? Let's give it a try. And if you're a creative out there listening, watching, I hope you guys are thinking through, reflecting first off on 2020. And yes, it may have been crappy, but um, I hope that you can really look for the good in 2020 because there was a lot. I know for me personally, there was a lot of good stuff, but there was so much heartache at the same time um and i hope that you can think through like what are your plans or dreams or aspirations for 2021 um i always get excited this time of year thinking about the new year and goals and stuff i just i love i love that i love reflecting on the old me old year and looking forward to the new year Yes, the world's not going to be perfect and nothing's going to be resolved, but I have control over um, my emotions, <laughs> my thought process, my feelings, the things that I can do with my time, and I get super excited over the stuff I want to get done in 2021. Whoa, let's, yeah, get pumped up, people. Okay, sorry. Have a little moment there. <clears throat> um, I'm going to. Oh, I kind of want to leave those there so I know where those are. But I want to do the outside. Actually, the outside rim is going to be a little bit of a darker green all the way around. Yeah. It's not any. It's like there's one, two, three. There's like four or five colors of green on this leaf. Hey guys, we got more people watching. Thanks for tuning in. I am doing a commission for. My dear friend, Catherine, who is the um, owner, founder, <laughs> main person involved with Fits a Swell. It's her business. She creates handcrafted Italian leather bags. They are gorgeous and beautiful. I put the link to her website in the description of this video as well as the chat. So please go follow her on Instagram. Um, and check out her website. Her bags make great, great, great gifts. So please go check that out. Um, I'm doing a commission for her of some leaves. I hope that's not it. Sorry. I keep doing that. I got to tape this together. Um, 
because she's become a plant lady over quarantine specifically. And um, she wanted me to do some leaf drawings to make into stickers to sell. So these designs could be yours. Um, hopefully by the show that she's going to have coming up this month from the 17th through the 23rd. So if you um, want to go see her in person, meet her in person, she's awesome. Um, go check her out and you can get some stickers. She also got some cute uh, leaf leather charms as well. Um, all of it's on her website. Except for the stickers, those are brand new, obviously in process. So <laughs> those aren't up there yet, but um, they will be. And I will definitely provide a link um, to those when they're done. So please follow me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. I'm on it all. So that you can be in the loop and get notified of live streams like this, as well as cool stuff like stickers and other awesome products. And this last leaf I did, I kind of scared myself a little bit because I the color wasn't quite right and I had pushed it to its max a little bit and I was like, oh no, I have to start over because it's not the right color. Um, so I'm being a little more careful with this one. I got a little too excited with that last one. So um, I didn't want to go too crazy. I'm gonna work up the layers, especially now that I'm live and everyone is watching me, <clears throat> which thank you for watching me. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I need to just go in and start bringing to life. So now I've got the base layers here, guys. Oh, and actually the cool thing about this leaf is that the, hey, Tuscan red, is that appropriate? Is Tuscany in Italy, right? <laughs> moment, moment, brain fart. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of this brown red on the stem here because it looks like it kind of bleeds into this leaf a little bit. And apparently the underside is also kind of this color, which I won't be able to show much with this guy, but... That's okay. Mm. Complimentary colors people are always awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the colors I've been using with these plants have been these wonderful grays. Um, okay, I need to figure out what I wanna do next. I think I want to go into the, oh, hey, this color is like perfect. Pale sage. Thanks, Catherine. I'm glad you approve. <laughs> okay, is this one going to give me troubles? Oh, might be okay. This is like the perfect color, guys, for this outside layer, but I don't want to go there yet. I want to go... Down the middle. There's a little bit more green on that stem right in here. Just gonna intensify that. Do some burnishing. Burnishing is what it's called, I think, when you push a little bit harder with your color pencil to actually. You're ruining the surface of the paper. You're pushing down the, the tooth of the paper. Um, yes, I know that sounds awful and mean, but it's normal. Put this down over the light green. grass grains here until I use those a lot just in general. Uh, 
what's the tooth of a paper? <laughs> what's, or we, we would say tooth of paper. The tooth of the paper. The tooth of the paper is what you would say. Yeah. Um, it's basically the texture of the paper. So if I were to look at it like under a microscope, there'd be like little ridges or little bumps on top. And you want to use a sharp pencil to get inside those ridges, but you don't want to push them down necessarily. Like right now you're seeing the valley of the ridges, all the white little specks. Um, and burnishing is when you ruin the tooth. You're pushing really hard to get rid of. But when you do that, you limit how many layers you can put down because it's not gonna be able to hold on to much else because it has no tooth. Ha! There you go. Okay, now back to that amazing sage color. This is where this is gonna smooth out. I think I'm happy with the color. Yes, and actually, while I'm thinking of it, there are a few spots. I'm gonna just hint at a little bit of a glossy blue. Oh, it might not be visible until I put this on, or at all, I don't know, we'll see. Now I'm trying to go in the direction of the veins of the leaf to get inside all those little grooves. I guess I might need to judge that later once I've done the next, the darkest layer of the leaf. Sorry, I realize I'm shaking the table. I don't know if I've done a colored pencil. Maybe once or twice I did a colored pencil on a live stream, but it's been a while, people. So this feels nice. Don't have to get out the paint. Um, that looks like black. Here, I think this is what I want. Aha, yes. Oh, no, this is warm gray. I want the cool gray. Oh, and this one might come in handy too. This one, unfortunately, is not sharpened and I'm not liking sharpening. Hey guys, welcome. Thanks for watching and tuning in. I'm doing a leaf design for a sticker for, for a friend of mine um, who owns a business called, oh, look at that, keeps breaking, um, called Fits a Swell. And she makes hand crafted beautiful Italian leather bags and she wants to start selling stickers. She's become a plant lady over quarantine. So that's why I'm doing plants. Leaves, I guess. They're not the whole plant. I guess I've been saying plant. It's the leaves of the plant. <clears throat> and this is a Calathea, right? A Calathea medallion Calathea because it's so medallion-like and big and look at the pattern. Sorry, I had to make sure I was saying that right. This is also a warm gray. Maybe I don't have a cool gray. I mean, there's a light cool gray. Oh, that's, maybe that's what this is. Yeah. It's okay. I consider this warm or cool. Looks cool to me. <laughs> so cool. Okay, we're gonna put this down. I think is the next layer because I need, I need to work out this value. Thank you, Kat. Yes, Calathea medallion is the name of this plant. They're amazing names, but man, I cannot for the life of me remember remember them. So I'm sorry if I keep asking. <laughs> 
And what is this again? And cat, what is this one? And what about this one? I can't keep it straight, so I'm sorry. I know it's like your passion and love. <laughs> Beautiful colors. And look at how sharp that is. Like I'm, I'm setting myself up for uh, more success in that arena <laughs> um, without having to go back and sharpen things as much. And I don't know if you know what that means, but man, if I look up close and like my edges look too um, fuzzy and blended, I want them to look sharper, crisper. It's going to look better for a sticker. Let's see if this is, I'm noticing actually something kind of interesting because there's tiny little veins on this you probably can't see and it's hard for me to see in the picture but there's tons of little veins. There's like these big ones that come every so often but then there's these little ones and it's like at the end of these, this, this pattern basically kind of follows that so you get these little lines that sometimes come out. I was thinking about this today, actually, um, and if there's any artist out there, give a holler, um, because as a creative artist where you're reproducing, um, recreating something, I should say, you know, you learn to become really good at observing things around you, <clears throat> and it's something I've learned as I get as I get older, as I become um, more experienced as an artist. I really my job is becoming a better observer of my surroundings, of my world, of the things that I really love and the things that I end up painting and drawing. I just I learn so much about just by looking at it. Um, it's really a cool. Um, a cool thing to dis it's just fun to describe it that way um and you can only reproduce something really well if you know what it looks like in order to know what it looks like you have to look at it you know and you have to look at it long enough you have to study it and that's what artists do, <laughs> is they have to learn to study these things to be able to reproduce them in a believable way, you know, or in a self-interpreted way, if that makes sense. The way they want to interpret it. Trying to get these little openings the right shape. And size. But I'm losing my sharpness. Gotta sharpen the pencil. Um, <clears throat> Let me back up and answer a few questions here. Kat asked, explain what working up a value means. Yeah, that's a good question. Sorry, I use these terms that I don't realize people probably don't know what they mean. Working up a value, at least I think of a value being higher as being darker. I think technically it's the other way around. Like formally a high, high value is lighter. Um, but dark values are like tens. Like this right here is a really dark value, but it didn't start out dark. It started out as this light, well, this medium grass green color, but I need to bring up the value to be darker like this. And I'm going to do that for each of those layers. So it's really just making it darker, working up the value. 
Um, and then we have a question from Anna. Thanks for watching. Uh, she's asking my, or you're saying, sorry, it's not a question. Your favorite part about art is learning to observe the true creator's work more closely. Yes, I agree. Definitely, definitely. I'm loving, um, I love, I lo and that's why I do nature. I paint nature and draw nature. I just love God's creation and God's um, amazing design of these things. So yes, I am on board. I agree with that totally. I need to make sure I'm doing this similar thing on this side where I create those little lines that kind of come out from the shapes. I'm like working upside down here with my arm. Trying not to shake the whole table, so I apologize if that is. If that is the case. Okay, these technically are curving a little bit more this way now. Again, see that's a more fuzzy of an edge. I don't want it to look like that eventually, so I need to start to. I'll, I'll be able to fix it. I'm kind of fixing my angle here a little bit. Okay, I've got that good dark down. Now when I put a lighter color down on top of this, it's going to basically blend it. That's what happens in pencil. And the, again, the more layers, the more um, vibrant it's going to become so I've got that layer but it's still you can see like the white of the paper is still showing through I want to get rid of that completely so uh, I wonder if I need to go I might put a layer of this blue down to make sure that it stays because that that gray I was using actually is looking quite warm Remember how I said it was like a warm gray, even though it looked cooler? <laughs> well, it was right. It's definitely warm gray. So I want to give it a little bit of a, some cool value back in there. Thanks for watching, guys. This is super fun. I do this every single week. I just, just like how many weeks ago, five weeks ago, past doing it for exactly a whole year, every single week. Um, even though I had a baby this year and moved and tons of things happened, COVID, <laughs> I was able to keep up doing a live stream every week for a year. It doesn't necessarily, I actually don't normally do them on a Thursday night. So I'm sorry if this works better for you. I don't normally do Thursday night. I usually do a Wednesday night or a um, Friday evening. So I hope you can subscribe to my channel so that you can get notified of when I do these. Um, but now, oh, I'm not liking that green. No, 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 no. I want something else. This is olive green. I thought this was olive green. This is pear green. No. Nope. Lime peel is what this one's called. Um, is lime peel the way to go? Yeah, no. Nope. Uh, oh, this is not bad. Kelp green. Is that what I want? Let's give it a try. I used that on the other plant. It looks too kelpy. Yeah, no. This might be my ticket. Let's try. Oh, and again, I'm clogging up the 
who in the witchy, what do you call it? Sharpener. Let's sharpen the blade a little bit with a normal graphite pencil. Get rid of the wax. It's not, oh man. If anyone wants to get me something for Christmas, it would be a new set of Prismacolors. <laughs> These are definitely, and I've used, I mean, I've had these probably for a long time, too. They're probably old. Um, oh, look at that. That's awful. Oh, no. It's so sad. Ah, there we go. It's like tiny, but we're going to make it work. I might not even like this color, so let's try it. Excuse me. Actually, it's not too bad. I'm going to put it down as a layer. I'm not going to push it super dark. Um, because I am going to put in... But hopefully you can see each time the white of the paper disappears. That is the goal. Okay, this side looks a little weird. Now, people, now. This is where I want to show some of those bigger creases a little bit clearer. Why are these warm gray? That's so irritating. I'm missing like a, huh? Oh, here it is, guys. Cool gray. We did it. Anna is asking... <laughs> Good question. Is it purely instinct buildup from practice, or is there a method to your madness when choosing colors? <laughs> I'm glad you noticed that it's a little bit insane. Um, there is a method to my ma madness here. Um, I've, I mean, I've had a lot of practice with color theory and mixing colors, and so I kind of, when I look at a color, I'm like, okay, I know what's in that, and I can kind of go at it. Like, there's greens here. I'll just give you a little demonstration. These are the same. Like, look at all those greens. Let's make sure you can see this. These are how many? Six different, seven different kinds of green. This one I know has white in it, so it's a tint. This one is definitely got yellow or red in it because it's it's an olive green it's not looking like a primary green it's dark it's it's a neutral this one has more um yellow in it but it still is kind of neutral right it's not like a vibrant it's not like this this is maybe a tint but it could also just be a tertiary color in between a primary and secondary. This one is similar to the olive green, but it has a little bit more blue in, it's hard to tell from, on camera. This one is your classic grass green. This one might be your primary green, like the green that will make all of these mixed with other things. This one is, um, it's probably, it's actually more of a tertiary. It's got yellow in it, but it's definitely derived from a grass green. And then this one definitely has blue in it, but it's also a tint. It's got white in it as well. Um, so you get this sort of aqua color. Um, so when I look at these, I automatically know which one is has what in it just by looking at the lead. And then therefore I'm like, okay, too much red, too much yellow. I'm always thinking of my primaries every time <laughs> I'm mixing because if I want a good solid green, I can't have any red in it. Um, but also, if I don't want a solid green, I 
don't want to use my primary. I'm going to have to use something that's got more of a, a, a tint or shade or tone to it. So I don't know if that answers your question, but there you go. Now I'm going to come in here with this cool gray because I want it to darken it, but not change the color really. Take the cool gray and I'm going to put it down along these amazing creases. So you can almost see a little ripple. I don't know if you can see that, but um, you'll see it a little clearer with the next one, hopefully. This here comes up and as it goes this direction, this gets darker. And again, all these layers, and I, I taught color pencil this year actually um, at one of my classes. And it was really fun to watch and it was the last day today. So it was super fun to watch or see what the students came up with for their final projects and were able to really, they really mastered this medium. I was so proud of them because <laughs> it's not necessarily easy Uh, but they definitely preferred it to watercolor or acrylic or something that's more of a paint, you know, medium that you can't really control as well. At least that's what they said. And I was like, yeah, well, there you go. Never use paint in your life. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't say that. I was like, now go paint something. You know, learn from what's hard, what's... Oh man, this is breaking. Come on, stay together, stay together. You can do this. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that, but that's what's going on down in there. And then we're gonna do a little bit on the other side, not as distinct. Actually, I'm not really sure where my separations are here, but we're going to make it up. And this side, for some reason, is not. I wonder if I didn't put enough layer down of the other colors. I'm just seeing more of the paper showing through on this side. Thanks for watching. You guys are awesome. You make this really fun. Okay, I'm going to jump to the next color because colors are affected called color interaction when a color is going to kind of visually change based on what's around it. So I'm going to move to the next layer because it's going to really help this look. Um, I think I'm going to just put this down first because I need to see. And I want to try not to mix with this darker color, but that, oh, that's it right there, guys. That is it. It's a little harder to change in color pencil. That's why I kind of start out carefully testing it because once I put it down, it's a little hard to change. I actually did a commission for a lady years ago. I was like maybe, oh gosh, how old was I? I don't know. I might have been 16, 17 or something. Um, she wanted her cats to be drawn in color pencil. One of them had died, I believe, at the time. And um, I was quite proud of how it ended, 
but she came back to me saying the eyes are quite right on the one cat that wasn't alive anymore and so I tried to fix it but of course I used color pencil and I was trying to erase some of it and just darken it and I can kind of shift things a little bit but I couldn't you can't really erase once it's down it's down and she came back to me like three times <clears throat> wanting the eyes fixed and she was very nice about it, like no hard feelings at all. Um, but it was definitely a challenge because I was like, this is colored pencil. I can't really do unless I started over or like literally painted over the eyes and started over, which actually I might have done. I might have done that. I can't remember, but I felt like I butchered the eyes. But then she eventually was like, oh, yeah, that's good. I think that's that looks like him. I was like, OK, <laughs> great. So glad you're happy. <laughs> Again, comes comes with experience dealing with those situations and also um, it gave me PTSD probably <laughs> now I'm like wait do you really like it are you sure you like it like can I fix anything like please like are you sure every time I show someone my art I'm like that's for them I'm like do you really like it are you sure you like it um anyway but that color isn't that on point oh my gosh now it's revealing that this needs to go darker because this and this almost look the same. And this is definitely darker. So we're going to go in with the olive green. It's definitely more olive -y, So we're going to come in and just darken that. Boom. And because my darks are down, I can kind of just go over it. It doesn't have to be the direction of the green. Or the veins, I should say. But this is why you have to work in layers, because I don't want to go too dark too fast with something like that and realize later that, oh, no, I went way too dark. It's like you have to go, you have to prepare the other way around and go, okay, I need to start lighter. <laughs> and then I can always darken it. That is the key. Oh man, it's already been an hour, people. I might be able to finish this though. So <clears throat> I don't like to go too much over an hour because I respect your time. And because I do these later, I get tired. So um, I have to call it a night before I... get too into this. <laughs> Clearly I'm into it. I stopped talking there for a moment. Oh yeah, a little bit more warm green down the middle. Now what's really going to make this leaf, guys, is the outer edge. Um, and it it's hard to tell, but it looks similar to this color, but I would say it's a little bit darker, maybe a little bit bluer um cat you could if you feel like you know that answer <laughs> looks like on some of these leaves it's lighter than this one but then the other ones it looks darker or exactly the same so i'm just going to go for the same first because i can always darken it because it needs to be dark on the outside edge so what did i use it's bluer i'm going to start with this one my primary grass green and put that on the edge. And this is where I can really make the edge super crisp. And then I'm gonna basically be bringing in that color in the same sort of pattern. Kat, you really chose some great leaves for this. It's gonna be super, they're gonna be super strong. Um, um, stickers helps when when you have a very clear vision and that that vision works well with the um, style that you wanted and all that stuff so good job <laughs> um I am working it's bluer okay cat thank you She's looking at the actual leaf as, yes, so um, 
Um, I'll make it blue on the outside. And Anna's asking, are you, I'm, I'm not, I'm sorry. I am working from a photo, not real life. Um, and I've been working from photos that Catherine has been giving me for these. Definitely. And back to the observing as an artist, um, you learn to draw better from your head when you've observed more. So now that I've drawn these leaves and really looked at them for a long time, I will be better at drawing them from my head. Not sure when I will actually draw them from my head, but um, if I ever need to, I'll be like, oh yeah, I, I did that once. you know. And so being a better observer means you're gonna actually end up Um, what am I saying? Oh, being able to draw from your head. Uh, I, I definitely prefer though to work from photos because I'm, I tend to, even if I go, I'm, I'm more of an impressionist painter when I paint and, um, I prefer working from photos though, because I still want the finished results to look, um, have the impression of a finish of the picture. So I, I work with the photo so that I can stay on track with that. But then I often change it quite a bit, actually. In this case, I'm not, though, because I want it to look exactly like the leaf. And Kat has so graciously and wonderfully provided photos of her specific plants, which makes it just all that more personal. Um, it's always a good idea. And see those kind of point at those big creases, which is just beautiful, beautiful, so beautiful. Oh, Caitlin's watching, yay. Um, We are doing, oh, thanks for watching, guys. We got seven people. Yay, yay, yay. You guys rock. You guys rock. Um, I am doing a commission for a dear friend who makes amazing handcrafted Italian leather bags. They are beautiful, beautiful colors, textures, so professional, amazing. Um, I put the link to her website and um, everything in the description of this video as well as um, her website and Instagram. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I started drawing in the um, comments of this as well. So go check that out. Please follow her on Instagram. She does amazing stuff, all inspired by her many amazing trips to Italy. So please go check her out. Her bags are gorgeous and make great Christmas gifts. If you're still shopping and looking for options. Um, I also do commission work. So if you are... I probably am a little booked now though for Christmas. So if you want something after Christmas, I can definitely get that started for you. <laughs> um, but I got quite a few in the works at the moment. Um, but thanks for tuning in. This means a lot. You guys can follow me on Instagram, Fragile Glory Impressions on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and then of course here on YouTube. Please subscribe because you'll get notified and hit the little bell because you'll get notified of um, videos coming up, especially these live streams that I do every single week, one night a week. Um, and this is my 50, what does it say? 7th, 57th live stream I've done without breaking the streak. Dab people dab anymore i just did <clears throat> i had a celebration a few weeks ago um when it was the 52nd when i did a whole year's worth of live streams and i did a giveaway and everything so um i do that stuff too so please 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 subscribe 
and send people my way. I do lots of fun YouTube videos. I actually have a YouTube video in the works right now. Um, I have a piece of art that is sitting outside in my backyard. And I'm hoping it snows tonight because I want it to be covered in snow. <laughs> and I want the snow to completely transform it um, and fade it. It's like a watercolor mixed media type of piece. So um, subscribe so you can see when that video comes out. I'm hoping it'll come out right before the end of the year. But if the painting's not altered enough, I'm going to have to, you know, change that up a little bit. Okay, I'm seeing, oh, uh, yeah, that could work. Is this the cool gray? Yes, Mary, it is. It's the broken end, though. Darn it. We are almost to 200 subscribers on YouTube, so please subscribe, and you can push me to 200. I think we're at 194, does that sound right? Um, and I did not think that a year ago I would be at that many subscribers right now. So party, man. Let's party. So if you've been subscribed, I thank you so much for being a support to this venture on YouTube. Trying to provide content for, honestly, right now, it's a bunch of different artists at different levels. Um, I like doing more humorous things that are kind of fun for creatives to watch, more helpful reviews of products and books and materials and all that stuff and then um some how-to videos how to draw winter trees and how to draw this or that um inspiring videos how to get out of our block all these things i've done um this year on this channel so i hope you can go take a peek at those share them with anyone that is needing that inspiration It's a little harder to make a mistake in color pencil because you have a little bit more control, which is what my students today said. They're like, I love it because it's way more control in paint, which is very true. Um, and I think a few live streams ago, I kind of like dripped paint on my thing and I had to make the little blob of paint into something because it was a boo-boo. Oops. Okay, so now, hold on, that's not done. It's close. It's very close. Um, I need to do, I'm going to see if this is going to do the right color. I might go with a warm, warm. Cat, you said it was cool, but I'm afraid it's too cool now. Oh, thank you, Anna. Yes, I think so too. It definitely needed that outer edge. Hey, God knew, knew what he was doing when he created this leaf, right? He's like, wait, it's not finished until it has the outer rim darker. Ugh, it's definitely not quite. Honestly, maybe I just stick with this.
I'm gonna definitely add, so I'm seeing them even clearer now, the little veins, which did I look back here? Some of these were harder to tell, but I think this one, I might just hint at a few more. Okay, I think that's doing it. I wanted this to basically lighten it and keep it keep it cool. I don't like this edge though right here. It's too fuzzy, um, but I'll definitely fix that later. But let's just go in and add a few. Just, just a few. Doesn't need to be everywhere. This is where you can kind of take artistic license and kind of imply because you don't need to put every single little thingy. This is still not smooth enough over here. And this still has some white showing. Sometimes you have to sing a little song, it just makes it all better. Thanks guys. Oh good, I'm glad that those veins are more defined because it definitely looks that way from the photo. So I'm like, I think that would make more sense. Um, do I seal my drawings with anything once they're done to keep them from rubbing and sponging? Yes, I do um, use a fixative, um, which actually, because I haven't done color pencil in a while, I'm gonna have to probably purchase some more because the fixative will protect it from smudges, but also um, from light. Um, so that it doesn't fade in the light if it were to be displayed in the sun or something, um, that type of thing. So, yes, definitely, I do. I definitely do that. So, just a fixative, um, like for drawings or pastels, would be probably what I would use. There's different fixatives for paint, um, acrylic or watercolors. You want to get the right kind for your art. Um, okay, this is bothering me. We're gonna try to fix it with something. The cool gray. Oh, that is breaking. Of course, of course. Not new, that is not new tonight, right? Uh, yes, Catherine, the end, I might not have mentioned that the last time, the The purpose of these commissions is they're going to be stickers. The designs are going to be stickers. So this is one. This is another. This is another. This is another. Aren't they going to be awesome stickers? Oh, and by the way, Kat, I don't know if you know. Do you know that I, oh, you know that I collect stickers. Do you know that? So I may have to purchase some of these myself. <laughs> Um, because I have a like kind of sickly amount of stickers that I don't use. I don't use them. I collect them on the paper they come on. I don't stick them on anything. Um, I may someday, my husband's trying to convince me to um, do kind of a cool mural with them or something. But man, that's going to be hard to get myself to do that. Because for years, I've collected these since I was seven. I've collected stickers. So this is kind of ironic that I'm here making stickers for you. Maybe secretly I just buy all your stickers. Actually, I have a rule. I can't buy my own stickers. Because <laughs> if I if I could, I could just go to the store and just like buy a ton of stickers. And that would not be healthy. So um, I'm not going to. That's That's my rule. I don't do that. Actually, I did break it once because I was at a fair and there was an artist and I want to support the artist. That was my, that's how I justified that. I was like, oh, I'm supporting supporting the artist and she's got stickers. So I'm buying the sticker, the coolest sticker. It was a, it was a little tea cup on a saucer with a little parakeet inside of it. I was like, oh my gosh, totally in love. 
So I had to get that. So I did. But I quickly admitted admitted it to my husband. I cried about it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the shame is real. <laughs> just kidding. So yes, stickers are, if you ever have stickers, and Caitlin, thank you for all the many years you've given me stickers. <laughs> stickers I have tons of stickers from you so thank you if you will definitely you know how to make me happy just give me stickers and it's cool because I look at them but then I put them away and I don't see them for a long time um, and then I get them out again and I'm like oh my gosh these are so cool so if I do a mural which would be super cool because then I can show off all the stickers they'd overlap maybe a little bit to make a mural but like wouldn't that be cool so someday, someday, and it's not going to be like an actual mural. That was the thought. But like if we ever had to move or something, oh my gosh, it'd be devastating. All these stickers on a wall that you have to just like paint over, or take off. Oh, no, 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 no. So um, I would be doing them on like canvases or like a big piece of canvas that could be rolled down over a wall. You know, I've got lots, I mean, lots of ideas. I've thought about this. Ooh, ooh, you see that? That's going to add a little bit of a highlight, and it's also going to burnish for me at the same time. It's like I planned it, but not really. Oh, but I'm definitely feeling tired, so I'm going to probably call it quits tonight. I'll definitely just do some sharpening of this a later date. Tomorrow's kind of my painting work day on commissions and art. So I will be um, doing that a little tomorrow on my own time. I hope you guys can stay creative and happy and healthy. And um, I greatly appreciate all of you watching. Uh, oh, let me catch up here. Hold on. I find that only metal pencil sharpeners tend to catch the tips less often than the ones you're using, but they don't have a little. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, actually, I had an amazing um, electric sharpener that I had at my studio and it broke. It like jammed or something and I could not fix it. I opened it. I took it apart. I couldn't fix it. It was the best. Like it sharpened it out to like here. I was like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Um, and it broke. So I need to get another once I rebuild my new studio in the backyard, renovate the new studio in the backyard, I will um, definitely buy a new one. Um, and then, I won't judge you, thank you. Uh, also, I really want to see your sticker collection now. It's like the farthest away from me at the moment. Maybe I'll text my husband and see if he can bring it over. Um, Caitlin. Um, yes, it's a... Yeah, probably not even a page. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know how many stickers you've given me, but... Um, thanks, Kat. Thanks, Kat. This is a lot of fun. This is so much fun. Just, just enough, you know, to elevate some of those little... sections there it's come to life i love seeing it come to life i sharpened that up a little bit it definitely looks better it might be, it might be done we'll see we'll see i i need to come i always look at it i can never say it's um done when it's the first sitting i have to like look at it again the next day and just be like okay it's officially done <laughs> or like do something to it um Oh yeah, thanks guys for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll tell you what, I will share with you my stickers if you come back next week. Because <laughs> um, they're definitely on the other side of the house right now. Um, but I would love to share my sticker collection with you. And maybe these can make the collection as well. So um, again, follow 
Catherine, or fits as well, really, on Instagram so that you can be up to date on what she's doing and maybe go to her show coming up here soon to see her in person and to buy some amazing gifts from her. And hopefully these stickers will be ready and there at the show. That's the plan. So um, I think that's all I wanted to say. So thanks for watching, guys. Huge support. Super fun. Um, tune in next time, guys. Thank you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye.